Queen Gieta was the Illyrian pirate queen who raided Roman ships, killed Roman envoys, expanded her country, and had some of the most excessively sexist history written about her by the likes of Cassius Dio. There's even a claim of buried treasure, because would it be a pirate story without one? But first, who were the Illyrians? Well, they mostly weren't Illyrians. The Greeks continued the long and rather ignoble European tradition of naming entire peoples after whatever they could be bothered to find out. Who are you people? Illyrians. And those are the RDI, and those are... You're the Illyrians. Got it. Naming the tribes of the area Illyrian would be like naming all of the USA Texans, because you met the people from Texas first. In reality, the Illyrians were a loose collection of tribes in the Baltics, centred around the Adriatic sea coast of modern-day Albania, Montenegro and Bosnia. Queen Joetta was of the powerful RDI tribe, who had become leaders of a number of tribes because of an aggressive expansion by her husband, King Agron. They were powerful warriors, with a long tradition of alliance with Macedonia, which was to be the King Agron's downfall, but not in the usual way. He was paid by the Macedonians to break a siege by the Greek League, the Aetolian League. 5,000 troops sailed forth, rocked up in secret, and quickly slapped the Aetolian League around a bit. They then pinched whatever treasure they could and sailed on home. King Agron, upon hearing the good news, had a few drinks to celebrate. We won? Hell yes! Time for a drink or two! By which I mean he partied hard, binge drinking for a few days, and then died as a result. Seems like a good way to go. Since his son, Queen Tuetta's stepson, was still a child, Queen Tuetta took charge. Now the Illyrians had a long tradition of piracy. They saw it as a legitimate business. And before anyone gets too uppity about the morals of that, remember that every nation in the area would have done some piracy, and was certainly trading slaves via the sea. But the Illyrians were particularly good at it. Queen Tuetta lived by the adage of sticking to what you're good at, and issued marks to any ship that felt like being pirates, letting them, or even encouraging them, to go forth, do pirate things, and drink rum to their heart's content. Aside from the rum not having been invented yet, of course. But why is the rum gone? So, just the doing of pirate things then. She also gave the order that every piece of land held by non-Illyrians was fair game. So the pirates took her at her word and went raiding. Whilst doing so, they happened upon an army of 800 Gauls who were protecting the city of Phoenice. A quick bit of pirate treasure changed in hands later, and the Gauls switched side and gave the city to the pirates. Given this was the same army of Gauls that sold out Carthage to the Romans, you have to wonder what the Greeks were expecting. However, before they could do much more than plunder the outlying areas, the Queen ordered everyone home, because of a tribal uprising and it was past their bedtime. So, grabbing what they could, which turned out to be an awful lot, they sold Phoenice back to the people and went home for milk, cookies, kicking butt and restoring order. And they were all out of milk and cookies. Whilst all this was going on, Rome had been hearing complaints from traders about the Illyrian pirates. To be fair, Rome had been hearing these complaints for centuries, but this was not long after the First Punic War, so the first time in their history they had a navy sitting around, kicking its heels, waiting for the Second Punic War. Two Punic, two war. Deciding that maybe it would be rather swell if the Illyrians didn't keep stealing all the Roman stuff at sea, they sent some envoys to meet with Queen Tuetta. The Queen promised that no officials would hurt the wimpy Roman ships, but she wasn't going to stop enterprising maritime businessmen from doing such deals as... Give me all your stuff, and in return, I'll give you this spear. That doesn't seem a very good deal. It wasn't a negotiation. This angered the envoys, and one of them lectured the Queen on how Rome deals with citizens who break the law, and how being nice would be a good idea. Well, how it theoretically deals with them anyway, as we all know that in practice it's more about the money and politics than guilty or not guilty. The Queen accepted that, and decided she'd be nice in her own way and so ordered pirates to raid the envoy's ship and kill the one who spoke to her like that. She was making the world a nicer place by killing the people who weren't nice to her. A public service, really. The Romans weren't so publicly minded and were somewhat annoyed that the Queen had broken international custom by killing an envoy, so they decided to be nice in their own way by sending 200 ships to the Queen as well as an army. Queen Tuetta, it seems, had already forgotten about the good deeds she did for Rome. An easy mistake to make since TikTok has informed me that Rome didn't exist. I forget things that don't exist all the time, such as my subscribers. Instead of worried about the non-existent Romans, who she didn't know were on their way, she sent her whole navy south to do more community outreach with the Greeks, by capturing their cities. What we would later come to call a British diplomacy. She besieged Corsera, which begged the Aetolian League, remember them, for help. The Greeks sent some ships, which went well. For the Illyrians, the Illyrians captured four triremes and sunk a quinquireme, which sounds like it belongs in the Kama Sutra, but is in fact a type of ship with 300 rowers, 
often a fleet's flagship. So the Illyrians captured Corsera and installed a garrison, led by Demetrius. Roman consul Gnaeus Fluvius Centumalus rocked up fashionably late to Corsera to break a siege he knew had already finished. But rather than let that stop him, he decided to do the traditional Roman thing bribe his enemies to fight for them instead. The head of the garrison, Demetrius, had gotten on the bad side of Queen Tueta, so when he was told that the Romans would make him king, he switched quicker than I can do a straw pedo. Look it up. And started helping the Romans. Swap sides and we will make you a rich. And make me king? I suppose so. I honestly couldn't care less. Is that any way to talk to a future king? Watch it. Sorry. Another consul, Postumius, had landed an army of 20,000 men and 2,000 horses, probably with men riding on them, and so a bunch of tribes decided they preferred not being stabbed to death, the wimps, and surrendered, or what we call pulling a French. The Illyrian navy, meanwhile, were besieging Issa. The Romans didn't like that one bit. Conquered enemy cities was their shtick, and they weren't going to let others muscle in on their territory. So they lifted the siege, by which I mean the Illyrian navy ran away as fast as their arms could manage. Ran as fast as their arms could manage. Jesus, that's a butchered metaphor right there. The queen hid out back in her capital, presumably rather worried about the 2,000 horses that may or may not have men riding on them. But the Romans were bored by this point, so they decided to call it quits there. Put Demetrius in charge with a stern warning about no piracy, which he promised with his fingers crossed behind his back, and went home to give their horses a holiday. And so ended the First Illyrian War. Calling it first may suggest a sequel, and you can be sure that the Romans were the Disney of their day, never letting a good war go without a follow-up one. What happened to Queen Tueta? Some say she jumped off a cliff, some say she retired peacefully. There's a myth about her buried treasure, presumably because pirates always have to have a myth about buried treasure, and some say she awaits a day that horses no longer roam the earth so she can have her revenge. Thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and if you're really keen, give that bell a little tickle.